Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's August 9th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And in the end, this is just a range day. It, early on, I was looking for a possible two legs up, or maybe even a possible two legs down. Here was your first leg up during the overnight, and then we came down and made a higher low. So if you work higher from there, you'd look for a, uh, a measured leg up. But we had this really strong leg down here, and I really thought we'd probably at least test the lows, if not try to make a measured leg down. But when we couldn't and just kept going higher, even though it's a very slow, choppy high, you want to switch gears and start looking for the uh, measured legs up top. Because if you don't reach it down here, you're probably going further in the other direction. So at a minimum, you're probably going to get some of these smaller legs. So at that point, would You'd want to keep this probably on your chart just in case we broke higher because that would be a target. But until we broke out of this range, which we never did, this was the high of the day and we turned down to the tick off of that. Actually, we might have been a tick lower or something like that, but we're real close there. And we turned back down from there. And so uh, it's mostly a range day. However, we spent the majority of the day trending up in this tan channel here and that's the way I had it earlier but in the end it it looks like you might could adjust it here some um, and that would have we, we turned down up here either way at the same spot because that's the over that's the high of the day but maybe the range was a little higher like that this tends to fit a little better although really we're not bouncing off of that right there so you'd have to move it to here and you may have still adjusted it to there um, generally once you get this close I mean it looks like it's probably not a, a good channel there but another possibility is maybe the channel starts right there and then you're looking at at this so and that tends to fit as well it works either way I stayed with the original two-tiered tan channel, and I really just kept it the way I had it. Uh, like so. And it looks like you get a little close outside, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I believe that to be the correct uh, way the channel was right there. And so might have even been a little steeper than that. And you've got a close outside right here. But in the end, I think this is more, more like it right here. So, but if you played it the other way, the way I originally had it, then it was more like this move. And it looks like you got a close outside here, but then the channel's holding again. So more than likely that's the way it should be the, the key is it's just hard, it's not a clear channel and it's really more of a range day with an upper trend and you're better off to play these shorter term micro channels that helps to keep you and you can see we go sideways and then you get a little spike and channel up then you go sideways and you get a channel up and we get an overshoot so if you use these more micro patterns, it definitely helps you a lot. So a, lot, a couple of different ways to look at it there. I, I still think if you use this more micro patterns, you come to the same conclusion no matter what. And we were just going sideways again here too. I didn't color that, but we'll just color it to make it a little easier to see. But let's buy uh, a zoom in. And we'll talk about the day but early on you could clearly see this blue trend channel it's clearly in play it's been confirmed and holding and then you get your first break outside but there's a new swing high right there it's higher than that swing high so you get a new count first entry second entry you get a second entry long right at the key entry point right at the um, EMA if you get that one trade you get an easy runner there and that's probably all you need for the day I like these early trades and you can see we zoomed right on up and we we made this high we went a little bit higher than the open over here um, and the close from yesterday uh, 
and then we turn down it and the bottom just falls out unfortunately you don't get a good way to trade that there is a second entry short right there but that's so congestive and so far away from the ema i don't like it just wait and you'll probably get a long and of course you get a first entry short a second entry short that fails and it's actually a second entry long it actually was a second entry long when it broke there but i don't like that signal bar it's too close to being a neutral bar but when it turns lower and gives you that failed second entry short or triple test you could call that a triple test right across there as you can see uh, you may enter there it's a little bit congestive still but we're so far away from the ema we're overdue to come back and then when it makes the higher low i definitely like going long just to try to ride it back to the ema and guess what if you catch this long you get another runner easy runner and you ride you know it's another several points there um i mean that's a six six point move easy so if you can just get a piece of that you do pretty good and then of course we we work down here and i marked this right here because somebody asked me about this they traded this as a failure on the mes it worked on the es but it didn't work on the mes and honestly i don't even like it on the es because prices are right there at the ema and you got one two three doge three bars three dojis in a row don't take that trade not on a failure that's not there's just too big a chance you get trapped and that's what would have happened uh it would have worked on this chart but what prices are probably doing here is pulling back and testing this breakout area right across here because this is a little bit of a congestion area I just drew the support line, but you can clearly see there's congestion right across there. And if you drag this out, that's what prices were doing. They were pulling back and testing that. And they actually got back inside and had a failed break lower here before they took off higher again. So just keep that in mind. And so that's what prices were attempting to do is come back and test that. So there's not a lot of room. If you had to get in lower and on the mes this was actually broke higher and turned down and you didn't get to go short till way down here and you just didn't have any room back to that test that retest and you get you get stopped out so that's the difference but i, I don't like this on either chart and it was an engulfing bar on the other on the mes and i didn't like it either so if that trader's watching this video neither one is really a very good setup um, i can see what i can see you're see it, you're looking at a possible trap right there but those three dojis in a row, anytime you see three or more bars stacked side by side, and at least one of them's a doji, then guess what? That's congestion. And this is what will happen. Prices will break out one side and fail, break out the other, and they end up going sideways like this. And you just don't know which way prices are going to win out or how many times they're going to fail before one side does win out. Generally, you'll move on in the same direction you traded into it. So we did trade down into this. Uh, but... You can see we didn't go very far and it, it actually fails out both sides before it goes higher again so just keep that in mind but we drop down here we run up this is what a good reversal looks like we turn down first entry then we go higher we come back we pull back to the ema again this one is even a little congested and that's why i marked it green but um, at this point i was looking for prices to go higher at least make another leg up like this right here and you can see this leg and there's your measured leg that you'd be looking for so um, i like that trade and you can see even here it pulls back and it comes back it breaks out and it pulls back and tests that and then goes higher uh, and then it fails out the top and comes down right back in there and then we're going sideways again but you can clearly see here uh, when we came back, I don't like going short there. Uh, we do have a close outside and a couple legs up, but that's an engulfing bar. Uh, it's a fairly bearish bar, but there's just not much room back to the EMA. If there was a little bit more room between that and the EMA, I'd say maybe. But it drops on down and it, it starts bouncing up through here. Um, really, it just starts going sideways. But you can clearly see it is working off that trend line so um, notice that there's a new low there this is basically a double bottom and just sideways stuff so it finally pushes higher comes back gives you a higher low on a first entry and then a second entry and it fails there's another possible failed second entry reversal on a breakout 
and it's also notice the new swing high first entry second entry and that's a fairly bullish bar so i like going along there just looking for it to maybe make another leg up and it goes up here it doesn't go far and then it's going sideways again and that's really been the mo lately is that prices spend a lot of time doing this and then we'll finally get a spurt up or a spurt down and it's just really hard to trade this stuff so somebody today asked me and i did want to say this somebody asked me i don't know if it was on the forum or in our email but somebody asked me why the market was so slow lately because comparing it to last year it's really slow and it wasn't this slow last year so they didn't think this was normal but let me tell you last year was 2020 covid year and the whole year was the most volatile year i've ever seen in my 20 something years of trading never seen anything like last year it was the craziest year ever in my lifetime of trading anyway so it wasn't a normal year last year so you, and that's the thing that people don't often miss the point on they'll test something or they'll try something and it works great for a little while and they they but they don't test it very long and then all of a sudden it quits working and they wonder why or they'll test something and they fail a few times and they give up when they just didn't test it long enough so what you got to understand is this market has over over periods of time it has multiple personalities it gets fast it gets slow it gets medium it gets very volatile very very low volatility and so you got to test something over a long period of time to get a true read and that's one reason why it takes a long time to learn to trade this because just as you think you start to learn it it'll switch gears a little bit the price action is still always right but it might move faster it might move further you know it might be trending up so resistance gives away a lot and you start to think that you can trade into resistance but you can't because it'll it'll start failing again or, or the trend will be down and so suddenly you could support will start giving away more often and everything into resistance fails so there's just so many i mean those are just small examples that are it's really hard to explain at all and there's no you just have to get a lot of experience at this sitting in front of a screen watching charts it's, it's like the best thing i can compare it to is like trying to learn to hit a baseball in professional baseball every pitcher has a little different pitch and every pitcher can pitch one pitcher can pitch sliders where another can pitch curveballs and some are their their best pitch is a fastball and so you got to be able to get used to hitting a ball that goes 100 miles an hour and then the next pitch is some kind of off-speed pitch that goes 80 miles an hour and you're swinging way ahead of it but over time you get practice at that and you get used to seeing that in all the different pitchers it's like the market has different pitchers that have different balls they can pitch and so the it takes a long time to get skilled at this because you got to see them over and over and you got to see the pitchers and start to learn the different pitches and and the market's basically pitching something to you every day and some days it's different and some years some months it's different some years it's different but over time you start to see it and get it and it's not so difficult so i hope that analogy helps i like to use analogies because sometimes they help people to understand what i'm trying the point i'm trying to get across but this is not easy to do and you can't read a manual you can't watch some of these videos and practice for a month or two and be good at this you probably can't do it and practice for a couple years and be good at this have realistic expectations because if your expectations are unrealistic which 90 percent of traders are you're going to fail because you're going to come in here and you're going to screw up and you're going to lose first thing you're going to do is think you got it and you're going to open an account and put your money in there and you're going to blow it and then you're just disheartened and you think well i can't do this well you didn't give it enough time that's the main reason because your expectations are unrealistic this is this is the world series of trading and you're going up against traders that have years and years of experience that are really good at this you can't fool them they fool you so have realistic expectations if you want to do this if you're thinking you're going to come in here and practice this for a month or two and make some money on the side you might as well just pack up and go now because you're not it doesn't work like that this is a skill and you got to become skilled and if you really want this you can do it it took me a few years it takes most people years some people never get it 
but it, it can be done if you know what to study, which I'm giving you the right information. I'm showing you what works. We've got proof. We've got multiple people that can do this. Not everybody can do it, no. But so, different people have different skill sets. And it, some people it's going to take longer than others. Some people are, but nobody, very few people are going to do this in a few months. Most people on average are going to take two to five years. That'd be my guess. That's just throwing a number out there. So, uh, you know, I don't have anything scientific to back that up. Just based on doing this for as long as I've done it and teaching people and coming across with people, very few get this in a few months. So anyway, I got off on a tangent there, but you got that trade there. It's a breakout pullback. It's a second entry. It's a failed second entry short. It's, it's a bounce off these trend line. If you drew it this way, there's a lot of different things going on there. I like that long and you can see it took a few minutes before it kind of took off, but it did. And then you get your first break here. You pull back to the EMA and you get a first entry and then a second entry. Nice signal bar. It takes this one a few minutes to work on up, uh, but it keeps going. And then you get a triple test here. The key to this one is, do you have enough room to scalp out? Um, if you And I think there's only five or six ticks, maybe only five ticks in there. So you might have to drop a limit order right at the top or maybe even try a tick in. My guess is you could, you could easily get filled right at the top, but I don't know if you'd have got filled on a tick, a tick inside of it. It's very doubtful, but once it fills, takes off, it's gone. And that's and it's the same thing. It just goes sideways and then it bursts, sideways and a burst. And now it's going sideways and bursting downward. So uh, this runs up and gives an overshoot and then quickly sells off that high. I don't see a setup there. You need to wait on a lower high and there's no lower high setup here. In fact, you get a failed break lower. This is actually a double top. So you could look at this as a new high. So first entry, second entry. Uh, and you can clearly see a couple of legs down there and a nice bullish bar. And so you could trade this as a failed breakout. I'd want, you're probably better to wait on a higher low. It never comes. So if you didn't take the more aggressive trade, you didn't get to trade that. But it looks like two legs down to me. And then it runs up. And you can see those failed breakouts, especially if you're entering with the dominant trend or the current trend tend to be the best trades and of course it breaks out the top and turns down but no setup there and then we just fall down here and chop sideways into the club into the three o'clock hour and there's not any more trades there so not a lot of trades today there just weren't and these trades you just have to be patient and see it until you see it and it's really hard there were a couple of times in here i was tempted to try to be a little aggressive on some of these trades and most of the time my gut instinct was right i would have had a loser a couple of them might have moved enough to get a scalp like this one right here was tempting on a higher low but it's just it's not a very good setup you push through the em the midline of the two tier you can see the midline of this blue uh range here it pushes through and pulls back like a higher low and it does break lower first and go out the other side it's very tempting to go long right there but there's a lot of resistance right across there on you can see We've been playing resistance right across there too. And so I was hesitant and of course it worked, but there were a couple others that I felt the same way and I was vindicated and right. So listen to your gut instinct. You can't be afraid to pull the trigger, but listen to your gut instinct, learn to trust it. And I hear that all the time. People will say, you know, I've been watching this trend line and I finally decide to trade it and it fails. Well, if you look here, there's no setup to trade this trend line. The setup, the only setups were right up through here, and there's no setup here. If you saw it where it was a little higher, like this, there's still no setups along that trend line that fail. None. If you saw it all the way down here, like so, which is probably the more correct, still. There's one setup right there that might have got you, but that's a first entry, and that's congestion. One, two, three bars, and two of them have no body. So if you just follow the rules and wait for wait for the second entry, which comes right here, it's not a very good setup, but it would have worked. Guess what? So follow follow the rules.
if you're if you're reading the chart right this is not that hard and that leads me to one other thing i want to mention somebody i hear this a lot it's an old wives tale uh, i used to believe it too but don't be afraid of the open the price action at the 830 open the price action the price action is never wrong some of the best trades come right at right around seven uh, or i'm sorry 815 to 830 to 845 don't don't worry about the open if you're reading the chart properly and you're drawing your your patterns properly those are some of your best trades so don't be scared of it i hear that all the time i'm scared of the open i, I saw a perfect trade and, and i skipped it over and of course i was right and then i took the next trade and it failed and they get all discouraged but i i, I can't tell you how many times i hear that i saw a perfect trade at the open but i was scared of it because i'm afraid to, i'm scared to trade the open I hear all these stories that you don't trade the open. Look, 90% of what you read in here about trading is wrong. <laughs> Trust me, it's wrong. And if you learn to read this chart, you'll learn, you'll one day say, hey, Matt was right. I agree with him. Most of what you read and learn is wrong. I mean, people get so hung up on risk or reward. We're only trying to get four measly ticks on a scalp. If you're scalping, the odds are, if you enter right in the right place right here, the odds that this goes four ticks in your favor before it goes however many ticks this way to one tick below that bar is so far in your favor that unless you read it wrong, you're probably going to have a winning trade most of the time. What we do doesn't, risk reward is not that important. Where you put your stop is more important. I'll hear people say, oh, I started adjusting. I put my stop in the middle. And then a month later, they write me and say, I get stopped out all the time. None of my trades work. I get stopped out and then I see it go exactly where. And I ask them, well, show me your trades. And they're putting their stop somewhere in the middle of the bar. They're, they're trying to stick to the eight tick rule without putting their stop one tick below the signal bar. You got to put your stop. There's a reason why we put them where we put them. So if you don't believe me, just try it. It might work for a little bit, but eventually you're going to, you're going to grow. You're going to regret it. And you wish you'd listen to me. So don't, the moral of that whole story is don't believe most of the stuff you read about trading because it's wrong. And it's become, it's, it's been ingrained in people's head and they think it's, it's like the gospel. And so everybody believes it. And if you go on these forums, they'll argue with you and tell you, and I guarantee you nine 9.9 .9 out of 10 of those traders never made a dime trading. They they can spout off those rules and they can tell you what you should have done and shouldn't have done, but they're not making a dime or they wouldn't be there. They would be busy trading. So look, experienced, skilled traders don't hang out in forums and trading rooms. They don't do it. Most of the people there are learning unless there's somebody there overseeing it that knows what they're talking about. And most of these forums are just internet marketers. They're, they're not traders that create these things. Traders are busy. I got into this by accident. Never intended for this to be like this. So it's, I'm not saying that everybody that has a forum is that way. There's probably some good forums, but most of the ones I know are full of BS. They're leading you down a path of destruction because everything they teach is wrong. Everything. 99.9% .9 of it is wrong. So anyway... I'm going to shut up for the day, wrap this up. Uh, we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.